So now in this video, we're going to use two NAND gates. I have an integrated circuit with uh, four of them, but uh, we're going to wire them up like this. So not terribly complex. Main thing is each one has an input with a pull up resistor. Sometimes we'll use, we're going to use a jumper. You could also use a mechanical switch, but sometimes you make a direct connection to ground to pull that input low. But for the most part, the input is high, held high with a pull up resistor. And so the output, one of them is going to be high while the other one is low. So that's what the uh, Q bar means, is that whatever the output is for that one, high or low, that one's the opposite. So high, low, and if that one's low, that one's high. So now if this one's low, that means both inputs are high. That's the way NAND gates uh, operate. And so if we give it a low input, that will set that high. We'll have two highs there, that'll set that one low, go in there, lock in that one high. So I color coded it right there. And again, it's just a brief connection. You don't have to hold it into that state with the input. You just give the input a brief signal and it'll flip back and forth. So if you give a low input to the uh, pin that uh, you designate as the set pin and it's active low, that's why there's a bar there. It's waiting for a low input. But in any case, you set that one low, you guarantee the output's high. And uh, there you can see both inputs there are high. So that's low pretty straightforward and when you want to change uh, states again so you can release the switch it'll stay in position like that release the uh, low input I mean you give a low input to the other uh, pin here with the pull up resistor to that NAND gate that we labeled uh, the reset pin right there and a low input means a high output if either are low and so high goes back there and two highs sets that low and that low locks it in place so now here's a sheet from uh, another circuit I did, but I have the uh, pin layout for the 7400 integrated circuit. I'm actually using the 74HC, high speed CMOS version. That's probably the best one to use. And uh, so in any case, 74HC00, 7400, it's a quad. You can see there's four quad NAND gates right there. Each one of them with two inputs. So I want to pay close to attention to that. And we have to power the integrated circuit. So pin 14 goes to the positive side of the supply. We're gonna use five volts, so that'd be five volts there. And uh, pin seven, the ground pin goes to ground, which is the negative side of the supply, or zero volts. Now, all of these, the output is below the two inputs. So these are the two we're gonna use on uh, those side. These ones we're not gonna use. You're gonna see we're gonna put the inputs to one power supply rail or the other. That prevents the output from doing anything and oscillating. Now I also have a truth table on this diagram. So as I said before, if the output is low, we know both inputs are high for any given NAND gate. So if I want to set the output high, I just have to give a low signal to uh, one of the inputs and that will set that output high, which as I said before, feeds back, makes both uh, the inputs high for the other NAND gate and sets that one low which feeds back the low and locks the one and then the high. And so here we are on the board. So we got the power pins, power supply set to five volts but it's off right now. That's why neither LED is lit. So we got five volts there to pin 14, zero volts ground to uh, pin seven. And then right below the uh, positive power supply, we have uh, two inputs that I just put to ground right there, the other supply rail from what we're powering to make it a little easier to uh, identify them. But in any case, we got the output there floating. The output can be floating, that's perfectly fine. But the inputs you don't want floating, you want either to one supply rail or the other. That prevents the output from oscillating, which is not good for the integrated circuit, but not end of the world either. So now we have the inputs for the NAND gates that we're going to use, and we got the pull up resistor to the top input of the two we're going to use. Now for the load I added an LED to each side so we can see when the output is high and so when the output's high we got a one kilo ohm resistor right there. We're going to limit current to about three milliamps for each output because that's really the maximum you want to output. These aren't really meant to power stuff. But in any case when the output's high we got long lead the anode and then short lead the cathode so the LED will light up on uh, either side. So the output also feeds back to the input of the other NAND gate on both sides. So we covered all that, we will pull back and apply power and it seems to favor 
this one on the right. And also I want to mention earlier when I was filming this, I'm reshooting the scene, I had forgot to apply power. So when I turned the power on, I forgot to have the alligator clips powering the board. Neither of the LEDs lit up. Luckily, I thought to check that. But a lot of times you check your wiring when really you just need to get the power attached to the board. So that's probably the first thing you should do if the LED doesn't light up like you expected. So as I said before, if the output's low, that tells me both of the inputs are high. And that output is high. It's coming back to the input. We have that pull-up resistor. So I know right away, since I uh, understand how the NAND gate output goes, I need to give a low input, which I did. Now the output is high. And uh, that one's low, it's feeding back right there. So we can just move this jumper back and forth to lock it to uh, whatever output we want. So now, I also have uh, this jumper up here. We will look at what happens if we give a load to both of them, which I actually don't think is terribly bad, but I think it just sets both outputs high. We're uh, wasting current right there. And uh, so I think they're both on. I don't think they're oscillating back and forth. You can see the extra current uh, right there. So in any case, that's really it for this video. There's a lot more to a study when it comes to latches and flip-flops but uh, I think this is a nice easy demonstration easy to put together and so just educational just putting it together and testing it out right there so hope you enjoyed make sure you watch one of the other videos I'm posting click like subscribe the bell that donate to patreon if you can that helps out the most I have links down in the description but just watching videos helps out a ton thanks for that I will see you in the next video